So friends, as we prepare to hear the word of God for us this day, let us join our hearts together in prayer. Let us pray. So, O oh God, it is by your grace and through your mercy that you give us your word. So help us to be attentive to you. Come, O oh Holy Spirit, infuse us with your sense of calling so that we might know what it is you would have us do this day to be more faithful followers of your son Jesus, in whose name we pray, all God's people say, amen. So friends, the word of God comes to us this day. This is from the Gospel of Luke. This is the 10th chapter, the 38th through the 42nd verses. Listen for the word of God for us. Now, as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. Friends, the grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. Amen. Ain't it good to know you got a friend? Oh, yeah. God, we're talking about friendship, and we're doing some and some doing so in some pretty basic ways. I'll admit, the only wisdom I have to offer this Sunday, the whole sermon is this: friendships take time. The care you feel in your heart for your friends needs to show up on your calendar as well, and. Time is a precious commodity because there are so many good things that demand our time. It seems we never have enough time to pay attention to everything that demands it. So I've invited us to, uh, to sit with Mary and Martha, this story that Roger just read to us. It's a challenging story, no doubt. It's challenging because so many of us identify with the wrong person in the story, don't we? Every Bible study I've ever led on this passage, Martha gets more than a few defenders. Martha invites Jesus to her home. It's an act of hospitality. Hospitality is a, is a premium ethic in Christian faith, the welcome of others. And then she busies herself in preparing a meal for Jesus. It's true that one does not live by bread alone, but no one lives long without it. And in those days, you simply would not have someone to your home and not feed them. It was expected. And so she does this all by herself. Her sister Mary offers no help. She chooses rather just to sit at Jesus' feet and listen to him while Martha is warming the oven, cutting the veggies and tenderizing the meat, kneading the dough. Not only does she get zero help from Mary, but when Martha points this out, Jesus tells her that Martha should be more like her sister. Why are you so distracted with all your tasks? Why are you doing so much? <laughs> this is particularly odd, given the last conversation that Jesus had. Just before Martha invites Jesus, welcomes Jesus into their home, Jesus has a conversation with a lawyer and tells him the parable of the Good Samaritan. 
You'll remember the sketch of that story. This lawyer had questions. He came to Jesus, what must I do? Okay, who is my neighbor? He has questions. And not only does he have questions, the lawyer has answers. And he has all the right answers. He does. This lawyer knows everything he needs to know. But the problem is, he doesn't do anything. Twice Jesus has to tell him, well, if you do this, you will live. And at the end, he says, go and do likewise. This lawyer is a thinker, but he's not a doer. And that's his problem. Faith is not just something we think. It's something we live. It's something we do. But poor Martha, she's a doer. And that's what gets her into trouble. When she's so busy with her work, Jesus says, why can't you be more like your sister who's just sitting here and visiting with me, listening to the Word? So which is it that Jesus wants? Does He want us to be doing, living our faith, or just listening to the Word and reflecting on the Word? Jesus is being impossible here. It seems no, no matter which option we choose, he counsels to the opposite. In Ann Tyler's novel, back when we were grown-ups, Rebecca is a widowed woman who lives in her husband's childhood home, her deceased husband's childhood home, with her father-in-law. Uh, the first floor of this home is an event space, and she hosts gatherings, graduation parties, retirement gatherings, wedding receptions. She's a woman in her mid-50s. She is the mother to the children and grandchildren that resulted from her deceased husband's first marriage. And she has a sense that, as she says, somewhere along the way, she turned into the wrong person. In a phone conversation she has with her brother-in-law, Zeb, she says this. She says, look at me. I'm a professional party giver. I never read anymore or discuss important issues or attend cultural events. I don't even have any friends. You've got friends, Zeb said. You've got me. You've got the girls. Those are relatives, she says, and everybody else I know is some kind of repairman. Rebecca has been busy with her life and wakes up and finds herself friendless. I wonder if Martha felt that way. Did she look around and realize she had been so busy with her life that she was surprisingly alone? She's doing the best that she can, and Jesus says she missed something important. So is she not supposed to provide dinner? Of course she is. The reality is she's doing a good thing. She's doing a very good thing. Actually, the word Jesus uses to describe what she's doing is diakonios. It's the Greek word for ministry, diakonios. We get our word deacon from diakonios. So is Jesus saying ministry is a bad thing? Of course not. We miss the point if we think we are to choose between reflecting and study and visiting with the Word that Jesus speaks to us and doing. If we think we have to choose between being still and present and visiting and doing, that's going to lead us down a bad path. It's not that Martha was doing, it's that she was distracted. She was aware that what she was doing was good. And she was so committed to the good that it was that somehow she became distracted from relationships, from friendships. That's what Jesus says to Martha. 
Martha, you are distracted and worry not from what, but from whom. She is so consumed by the presentation of the table that she may not really know, I mean really know, those whom she will meet at the table. It is far better to share a PB&J with friends than to dine on bacon-wrapped scallops in orange sauce with strangers. Here's the point. I know you spend your day doing good. I know you do. If you're like me, in, in your working years, sometimes that work can seem so important that nothing else is really as important. Nothing else matters that much. It's not that the work is bad. No, not at all. But sometimes it can distract us from others, from friendship. I've got a friend, I've known him for 25 years. His name is Spencer, and he had a son named Trey. And Spencer spent hours and hours and hours volunteering as a coach for Trey's baseball and soccer and basketball teams. Uh, Spencer is like me. He's not an athlete at all. He never played any of these sports, so he didn't really know much about them. It was okay when Trey was a little tyke, but the games get complicated quickly, and so Spencer committed himself to study. He, he got mentors, and he attended some camps, and he would read up on strategies, and he became a really good coach, actually. They shared that journey for years. But one day, one day, when Trey was nearing high school, Trey told his dad, he said, Dad, I'm, I'm not playing baseball this year. Spencer said, oh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure you are. You, the, you're getting at the top of your game. This is going to be your year, son. This is the year you've been working toward. And Trey said, but Dad... I don't like baseball. Spencer said he looked at his son and he realized somewhere along the way he had forgotten how they had gotten started in this to start with. When he volunteered at first, he just wanted to be a dad, spending time with his son. But somewhere along the way he got distracted by that good thing. He said, Tom, I don't know when or actually how it happened, but at some point I traded being a dad for being a coach. It was a bad trade. I have a pastor friend. Again, not, uh, not, not a pastor of this church, but a friend I've known for a while. He, he told me that, that he and his wife, they invited some some friends of theirs over to their house said, we want you to come over. Let's, let's share a glass of wine. Let's talk. Let's, let's read Scripture together and talk about our lives a bit. And they did, and they had a wonderful evening. And as it was breaking up, that my, my friend, he said, you know, I'd, I'd like us to do this again. As a matter of fact, if you all are up for it, I'd like to do it, I'd like to do it regularly. He said, one of the people in the group said, Gosh, we know how busy you are. We can't imagine you would have time to do this on a regular basis. He said, you know, I realized while we were here, I need this because I'm lonely. I have been so committed to my ministry. I've been so committed to my diakonios, to good things, that I haven't paid attention to my friendships. If you're willing... I'd like to do this regularly. Do you know what he's talking about? Martha, don't let dinner distract you. Your life is always about people. It's pretty simple this week, the message. Try this. Take out your calendar. Open up your phone and Look at your commitments. Look at your calendar. Read it over. Of all the necessary, of all the good things that are on your calendar, where do you find there time for friends, for friendship? Because Martha, she would tell us after she learned this lesson from Jesus, 
she would tell us, when the meal is prepared, you don't want to come to the realization that you know the ingredients of the chicken marsala better than you know the burdens and joys with whom you are sharing the meal. Don't let things, even good things, distract you from that. Pray with me. Gracious God, we believe. Help our unbelief. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.